Okay, so someone asked me to do hominids. That is a huge section and I certainly can't do a three hour lecture on hominids, but I can give you some ideas of how to learn hominids. So firstly, you need to know Australopithecus afarensis, Australopithecus africanus, Australopithecus sediba, Homo erectus, oh sorry, Homo habilis, Homo erectus, Homo um, neanderthalensis, Homo naledi and Homo sapiens. So you need to know those, you need to create a timeline for yourselves, okay? And this, that's the first thing you need to do. The second thing you need to do is look at the evidence again, the evidence um, showing the hominid um, evolution. So just because these are the ones you have to learn doesn't mean you can't get asked another, another hominid. But if you are asked about another hominid, you'll be given enough information in order to construct a, you know, an answers. Okay. Um, what you need to know is the trends. And the, it's really quite simple. If you take, you make a table of ape-like features and human-like features and understand that there's a transition from um, ape-like features to human-like features through hominid evolution, you will understand the entirety. The other thing I need you to understand is that all, all the Australopithecans and all the Homo of the, the genus Homo all are bipedal. Maybe we are better bipedal organisms than Australopithecus um, afarensis, but we are all bipedal organisms. So you need to know what makes us bipedal, how the foramen magnums on the underside of the skull close, more ventrally located or closer to the jaw, how our, shape, our spine is S-shaped, how we have a bowl-shaped pelvis, how our, um, our knees, go well, our femur slant inwards, it's called the vulgus angle, how we have non-divergent toes and how we have a foot arch. Those are all um, Think those, those are all bipedal um, characteristics. And yes, if you look at Australopithecus shame, their legs are pretty straight, okay? They were not the most comfortable. They had really long arms, okay? But they were still bipedal. Now, the other term that I think people get confused with is arboreal. Arboreal means lives in trees, okay? Arboreal means lives in trees. And the Australopithecans absolutely lived in trees because they have more ape-like features, the curved fingers, they have the much more the stronger shoulder girdle for swinging, and they had the long arms compared to the shorter legs and etc. But they were not knuckle walkers, they were not apes, they did not use their knuckles to walk, even though they were happy to be in trees, they were able to walk on the ground on two legs. Okay, so that's the, it's very important that you understand that all the Australopithecans, all the Homo genus are all bipedal. Okay. Why? Okay, so then we go on to ape-like features and human-like features. So let's start with the cranium. The more ape-like features are small cranium, no forehead, okay, or very uh, um, slanted frontal lobe, so it goes backwards, very, very strong um, cranium, oh my word, very strong brow ridge, very big zygomatic arches, very thick zygomatic arches, you can use the word cheekbones, very pronounced jaw mandible and very protruding, almost not I call it a muzzle, but certainly protruding. A lot of the schools use the word prognathism, which means a slanting face. No nose. Okay, so that was cranial structures. Don't use the word brain size because you, you haven't seen their brains. Okay, we've got fossils. We know the cranial capacity of these organisms. Okay, again, let's go to the, I said this already, more ape-like features, much bigger shoulder girdles, curved fingers, long arms, short legs. The pelvis was not as bowl-shaped as ours, so it's still a bit straighter, but definitely more bowl or cup-shaped or wider than the other apes. And then, of course, um, the feet, the shame. They had like a little bit of opposable toe thumbs, so it wasn't exactly, um, it wasn't exactly like our thumbs, short and low down. It was still, they were still kind of long. On, on the hands as well as the feet, they were kind of the, the fourth toe, the fifth toe was kind of diverging a little bit. And then obviously moving to more human-like features, uh, the cranial capacity is the biggest one. So that's where the big thing between the Australopithecans and the Homo um, genus genera, I call the Homo species, um, was. Okay, so this idea of a much larger cranial capacity. And if you look at all the, if you look at, um, Homo uh, erectus and habilis and all of them, you'll actually notice that the cranial capacity is round. The cranium is round at the back. It's not straight. It's much rounder to house more brains. That's really what it is. Okay. Um, but the two things that are very specifically human 
are the nose and the chin okay we have a much flatter face but the trend was moving from a, a prog from slanted to flatter larger cranial capacity our arms got shorter legs got longer and feet became toes completely non-divergent okay so i think we're good with that but there were also trends with um with culture so generally what's found is we have the archaeologists and um, have not found any tool use with the australopithecans but homo habilis which is handyman was definitely the first one to have tools very rudimentary tools but definitely tools and obviously erectus and moving iron had much more advanced tools so that but they were the first tool makers okay so that was their culture then moving on to erectus which had fire and guys fire is important this interdependence but let's discuss fire fire is vital because fire number one kept them warm chased away predators and they could cook their food and you all know how nice it is to hang around a fire and chat to your friends so it created a sense of community and that allowed for communication and the development development of language so that was really really important um also because they could keep warm and because they were eating more food they had more mass to them they could eat more food they were able erectus specifically were able to leave africa and that's the out of africa hypothesis so fire is really a vital um vital i don't know stage that occurred that changed things okay it also when you cook when they cooked food the jaws could get smaller because they weren't chewing such hectic food and because the jaws were smaller it almost allowed for more space for the cranium to grow as well as the fact that there were more calories so the brain could grow so it all led to an increased cranial capacity or brain size you can use that in that in that term okay more intelligence more calories all of that they could then their brains got bigger and more evolved and they could start creating language and speech and having conversations and culture and community um, so all of that's really, really important. Okay, so that's your interdependence. Um, what else? So bipedalism is also really important. This is because it also becomes part of the interdependence. And um, because we had our hands that were freed, we could carry things, we could communicate, we could cooperatively hunt, we could make better tools, we could hunt with our friends and point, there's the, there's the whatever it is, let's go and kill the big buck. And because there were a few of us hunting together, we could bring down the big buck, think of like, cooperative hunting like in wild dog you obviously don't have to learn wild dog but the concept if you've got more of you communicating with each other and hunting together you can bring down larger prey so all of those things led to um that's why biopedalism was so important also you could see further to see if they're predators and the prey and carrying things was really important because if you could carry if you, before that before hominids were foragers that go and eat something and then they were or pre-hominid they had to go back to where they were living but if you go and you can now eat something and then come and bring stuff back to your friends then you can almost give get something like a division of labor some people are hunting some people are gathering some people are cooking some people are looking after the babies and all of that led to i suppose this idea of community and living together and having different um and having different roles so okay so let's go back. I've gone on a bit of a tangent, even though tangents aren't the worst thing when it comes to um, paper two. But let's just go through. So you've got your you, you've got your trends. We've done the trends in culture. We've done the trends in physical features. You have got to know the order. I've done the order. You um, and you've got to know two two things. Number one, you need to know about Australopithecus sediba. You've got to know all of the people involved and where they were found. If it's in the sags, we've got to know sediba is possibly a transitional fossil that sediba was possibly the intermediate between all the australopithecans and the homo genus okay because they have characteristics i like to use the word mosaic they are a mosaic of both australopithecus or more, more primitive features as well as more um, advanced features of the homo genus so that's a nice example of a transitional fossil okay and then homina lady um is an interesting one because homina lady was firstly um was uh, dated to be two to three million years ago, but now is dated to be between two and three hundred thousand. Those are not the exact dates, learn, okay? But it's the trends, of the, it's the rough dates. And Naledi is very ape like, very, very ape like, very, very primitive, except for that cranium. The cranium, the small, the small cranial capacity, but the shape of the cranium indicates that they have much bigger brains, okay, or more advanced. Um, and that is the very much the human-like features of homo lady. So there's lots of controversy, but that's fine because there's nothing set in stone at this point. Um, the only 
with the exactly the order of hominid evolution so don't worry about it just use your sources to give you the best the best answer okay and then um there's just one more thing i wanted to do oh it's really important to know that most likely humans evolved in africa and there's lots of there's lots of um theories behind this and i mean there's lots of evidence behind this um firstly the, the sand or the koi sand are known as the oldest extant people extant means currently alive today and if you look at the dna evidence this is why i want to discuss dna evidence dna evidence of the, the sand in the dna of the sand there is the most variation and variation or is due to mutations so if the sand have been around the longest they've had the most time for mutations to accumulate and that is why there's the most that's why they are said to be the oldest extant because they have the most variation they've been around long enough for all of these um mutations to accumulate all this variation to accumulate but another thing my cat might just arrive just we'll see how that goes okay another thing that is um is important is that the uh, mitochondrial dna also proves that humans evolved in africa because mitochondrial dna has markers or has also a mutation they're called markers and you can use these markers to see how closely related organisms are or how distantly related and if you look at mitochondrial dna again it's the idea there's the most variation because we evolved here and then you can look at europeans specifically and maybe europeans have markers that show that they're closely related and that they evolved at a much later stage etc so mitochondrial dna is really really important with that and um you can even date um what's called mitochondrial eve all the way back to africa showing that mitochondrial dna is very important in um looking at the out of africa hypothesis okay i have in 12 minutes i think i've done the majority of of um, hominids but i hope this does help you and just to create context guys it's not enough you still have to put your own knowledge over and above this but hopefully this gives you you'll probably have to watch this in stages it's so much information i've given you but hopefully you understand the timeline the trends the interdependence of all the bipedalism etc why bipedalism is important why fire making is important and out of africa and why humans most likely evolved in africa okay i think i'm done good luck for tomorrow just focus don't go to the bathroom in your paper too make sure that you've got enough energy take whatever vitamin b's or whatever else you need in order to be energized for this exam please remember that it is source based use your sources first and then your own knowledge to back it up but you're all going to be fantastic so wish you all the best goodbye